Welcome back to Math for Game Developers. Let's say we're playing Kerbal Space Program. And we have a little Kerbal Spaceship at position Xn and with velocity Vn. And it's currently in orbit around the Sun. It's in this orbit right here. And the Sun is at position C. And we want to use our new numerical analysis techniques to calculate what this orbit should be. So quick review, uh, last time we did this, we used Euler's method of integration, which looked like this. Uh, so what is this H? If you haven't seen the H before, I'm not sure if I've explained the H yet. The H is another name for delta T, but in numerical analysis, it's more common to call it H than it is to call it delta T. So we're gonna call it H for now. And this F, this F of XT, that was something like GT plus V naught, okay? Which is a, um, an implicit formula for projectile motion that describes the velocity of a projectile at any time uh, ever. But we, um, we can't really use this actually because we might have some deep space monster that might come in and smack our ship. Is our deep space monsters a thing in Kerbal Space? I haven't actually played Kerbal Space. I'm sure they are. So we might have some monster come and smack our spaceship and then change the velocity and then this equation wouldn't work, right? So video game, it has to be, you know, it's, it's dynamic. We can't have one equation that explains, that describes the velocity for all of time. So... Um, so we can't really we can't really use this guy. We have to calculate our velocity on the fly. We have to have a value that is our velocity um, at any given time. And then we have a problem: is how are we going to calculate a new velocity given all the forces that are uh, uh, that are in action on an object? And well. The answer is actually just to do another integration here, but we're gonna integrate the velocity instead of the position. All right, so it's the same thing. It looks just the same, except when you add, instead of adding HVN, we're gonna add HAN, where A is the acceleration of the object. The acceleration of, in this case, our Kerbal spaceship. Um, and how do we find the acceleration? Well, the acceleration at a point, xn, if you are out in space and the only the, the sun is the only thing that is is uh, putting a force on you, then that acceleration is going to be g times mass of the sun over something squared times something. And what is that something? It is, let me get a new color real quick, r. And r is just a shortcut here, okay? I'm gonna call this vector here r, which is xn minus c. So r is just a shorthand for the vector between the spaceship and the sun. So this is still a function of x. Okay, and this equation you will learn in, um, in a physics class. It is, the, is Newton's law of gravitation or it's, it is a modified version of Newton's law of gravitation. I'm not gonna get too far into it, but I will explain the individual pieces. This capital G, that is not um, 9.8 meters per second squared. That is actually the universal gravitational constant, which is the same everywhere in time and space. It's a very small number. M sun is the mass of the sun, which is a very large number. Um, when you divide it by r cubed and then multiply it by that vector, you get the acceleration due to gravity of the sun. Okay, so we can throw that in here for this a n, and then we'll be able to update our, um, our vector, our velocity vector. 
So there's really nothing new here so far. Um, we've been doing Euler integration, except now we, we see that we have to do two integrations. We have to do one for position, one for velocity. Except that we have a problem. We have a problem with doing it this way. And you can kind of see it here. Our vector, our velocity vector is a straight line, but the curve that we're trying to follow that our spaceship is on is a curved line. And you can't follow a curved line using a straight line. So what's going to happen is after one step, our spaceship will be a little tiny bit farther from the sun than it should be. And then you're going to do another step using a new updated velocity, and then it will be even farther from the sun. Then you'll do another step. And it will be farther, and you'll do another step. And it will be farther. The same process will repeat. You're going to get farther and farther and farther until finally you shoot off into space and our kerbals will get lost in space and everybody will cry. So that's no good. So we have to find some kind of solution to this problem. Um, and actually, it's a very straightforward problem to solve. There is a thing called semi-implicit Euler's method. Okay. And semi-implicit Euler's method is very similar to Euler's method. I'm going to write the formula for it here. And you know, if you don't if you're not looking closely, it might look like the same exact formula. In fact, so far it is the same exact formula. Until you get to right here. Right there. Let me use a very different color plus one. All right. So there's no plus one right here. There's no plus one there. There is a plus one here. And this is the magic sauce that makes it work. So what's happening is instead of using the the current velocity to calculate the new position, you use the new calculated velocity to calculate the new position. And I will show you why that works. Let's say Here's your Kerbal spaceship at position Xn. Okay, and we're very zoomed in here. Here we have our velocity vector, Vn, and this is the tiny version. This is the Hvn version, the tiny one that we, that we are get about to add to get our new position. So our new position, Xn plus one, is about to be right here at the end of this vector, okay? And then we're going to calculate a new velocity vector. And we're going to do that by applying here is HAN, which is the acceleration due to gravity. Okay, and we're going to add these two together to get this will be HVN plus one. This will be the new um, the new acceler the new velocity vector next frame, but you can see that it's already kind of pointing to where we want to point. I've drawn it on this in this picture to be really convenient to be sitting exactly on the line. It might not always be exactly on the line, but you can see it's definitely depending on the you know depending on the length of H A N, it's going to be more towards the line than than the than x you know the old x n plus one. So why don't we just use this point as xn plus 1 instead of that point? That'll be closer to where we want to be. And it turns out that, that this um, version of Euler is called energy preserving. Okay, Because every time the spacecraft drifts farther and farther and farther away, it's gaining potential energy. Its kinetic energy is about the same. Um, because its speed is about the same. But when it, it, you know, it takes effort to move something up. And when you do that, you're giving it potential energy. So, so Euler's method accidentally imparts potential energy on the things that it's simulating. Uh, and that's no good. But semi-implicit Euler, using this trick right here of, of, uh, of using Xn plus one after you've already calculated the new velocity, that doesn't give nearly as much 
potential energy to the things that it's calculating. And so it's much more accurate in this, in this sort of situation. So let's, yeah, that, that's a bit about it here. Let's go to the code portion and see everything in action. So here's the portion of the code that um, calculates, does all the calculations for the satellites um, or, or, you know, Kerbal spaceships, what have you. And I have a few variables up here I'll explain quickly. Here's the center of gravity of the sun. G is the gravitational constant. I've set it to one. That's not the actual gravitational constant. Um, the real one is very small, but this one is a easier value for testing. So, so I'm using one instead. H is our delta T. It's our time step. You, you see, I have it to set to one sixtieth, meaning we're doing 60 frames per second. The mass of the, of the satellite or spaceship is one and the mass of the sun is uh, 10. Again, 10 kilograms is not really the mass of the sun. But, uh, you know, it's just a test. So now I have a little function here that is, um, is a function for calculating the acceleration due to gravity. And it does exactly this formula right here from the math portion of the video. Uh, here's the part where I do fixed time step. We covered that last time. And I have some number of satellites that I'm going to iterate over. I'm going to, I'm going to um, update all of these satellites one at a time. So we're going to grab XN and VN from the current position and velocity of our satellite. And here I've made two little functions V and A that help me calculate the next velocity and acceleration. And here's how they work. If H is zero, then that gives us the current, you know, this, this term will be zero, will be zeroed out. And then we'll get the current, um, just the current velocity. But if you pass the, the h from our time step into this function, then that will get us vn plus 1. And if we pass in 2h, we'll get vn plus 2. If we pass in half h, we'll get a velocity that's you know between this time step and the next one. So this is a convenient function that we're going to use a lot in future videos. I've just gone ahead and made them for now. Okay, so V to calculate um, velocity and A to calculate acceleration. And then we're ready to do standard Euler right here. So Xn plus H times V, that should look familiar. That's the, um, that's the formula we had in our, in our previous video. And we assign that to be the new position. Vn, H plus A, H time, Vn plus H times A, that's the new velocity. And then here we can see that I've calculated the total energy of our spaceship. And um, this is, a, again, another little bit of physics, but uh, the reason I'm doing this is, so I'm gonna set the radius of our, of our satellite, the size of our satellite, based on the energy, so that we can see when our satellites are increasing or decreasing in energy. We, we don't want any increase. We want, basically, because this is a closed system, we want our satellite to just orbit and not increase or decrease in energy. So let's compile that. Um, wait. Okay, nope. So we've written standard Euler. I'm just going to go ahead and write, uh, let's see, sem semi implicit Euler before we go on. Um, and here's all we have to do. There. Done. When I pass H in here, that is going to pass H right there, and that is going to compute vn plus one on the fly and then return it here multiply times h most uh most of the time when you see games do this most games actually use semi-implicit euler without knowing it for example in previous um episodes i have uh I, you know you set the translation and then you use that oh wait but this is backwards okay this is actually a common mistake that it looks like i've made so let's see. What we want to do is we want to calculate the velocity and then use the velocity to calculate the next position or translation. Um, if you do it the other way, and we'll, we'll test that. We'll, we'll see what happens when you do it the other way. If you, if you do it the other way, you actually get nothing. It's no good. Um, you want to calculate the velocity first and then use that 
for the translation. And if you do so, then you get an energy preserve. I mean, it, it, okay, it will work the, the other way, but it won't be an energy preserving um, simulation. So that's important. We don't want to make that mistake. We want to calculate the new position using the updated velocity. Great. So let's compile here and run our code. And now we're looking at the two satellites and you can see the red one has a larger box. And as it gets closer to um, the sun, that box is gonna grow. Keep your eye on it. So there we go. The red box is getting a little bit larger. Every time it, it makes a pass at the sun, the simulation is gonna make it a little bit larger and larger. And that's because when we're close to the sun, uh, the simulation is getting it wrong a little bit and moving us, you know, out away from the sun farther than we should be. Um, and so we're gaining in potential energy and so on. But you can see the green version is the semi-implicit Euler and it just keeps trucking along. It never changes its, its uh, total energy. It's actually a pretty good simulation. So a lot of places on the internet, you hear people say about how, you know, Euler's, Euler's method is, is terrible and you shouldn't use it. And um, for video games, you should use Runga Cut of 4 or something like that. Runga Cut of 4 actually is not energy preserving. Um, whereas semi implicit Euler, see, you, see, you see our red box getting bigger. Semi implicit Euler is energy preserving and actually, you know, ac fairly accurate, accurate enough for most video games. Runga Cut of 4 is not necessary. We're going to cover Runga Cut of 4 anyway in the next couple of videos. Um, but it's just more complicated and it's not really necessary. So, so let's see. So let's go back and let's see, let's kill this and let's see what happens if instead of updating our position using the new velocity, instead, we're going to update the velocity using the new position. And we're going to see what effect that has on semi implicit Euler. Let's restart. And you can see that, um, so red is regular Euler and green is our weird Euler where we're updating the uh, velocity with the position instead of the other way around. And you can see it doesn't really have much effect at all. I mean, it does, it's not exactly the same as standard Euler, but um, it's really not what we want. We're still losing energy or we're still gaining energy with this simulation. So that wraps up this video and uh, Next, we'll look into more methods for, for doing the same thing that have different properties and are useful in different ways. Um, so I'll see you then.